how does it feel to be here at the MCM <coughs> London Comic Con? Do you boys want to answer? Amazing. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. I'm a big comic fan. I have been for years. Um, and I kind of feel like I should have dressed for the occasion more, you know, I, I should have worn my Punisher t-shirt and, uh, kinda, you know, but, um, yeah, it's, it's incredible, like, cause I've never been to an event like this and I think for us to have our film that we shot in the desert, uh, here among all you lovely people and all the people downstairs is, it's a great honor. Yeah. I think it's, it's one of the amazing things is seeing how these, these types of events grow, uh, over the years and, and, and what can, I mean, I, I suppose as, as, a, as a culture, it's, it's, it's a very, it's, 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 uh, kind of a little bit niche, but it's actually becoming just so much more inclusive. And the fact that, yeah, our film can be welcome to something like this is, is, is great. I think you go on a, a journey making a film, always. And I was just sitting with the, with these guys, you know, um, it's a proud moment to sit, it, you know, and amongst these extraordinary, you know, juggernaut sort of franchises. And, you know, <coughs> we, we went out there and thought, thought, like hell to, to bring a film back in some really tough conditions and everyone gave it their heart and soul and so to sit here in, in a convention like this and be part of Comic Con and obviously you know in, in the, the size of Comic Con in, in, in San Diego as well is extraordinary so this is just another extraordinary and slightly surreal and very proud step in the journey really and it, you, mm. you know you couldn't imagine being here when you're sweating away in a in a uniform in yeah. in the desert, you know, a year and a half ago. <clears throat> so it's very, very special. Mm. I'm just really surprised. I'm, I'm still sort of riding on it. I just saw my little nephew downstairs. He's having a great time. And um, I got out of the car when I first got here. Did I tell you that? And the four girls ran at me and big platform boots and outfits on and stuff. And I, was, I felt like Ringo, you know. I thought, I'm in the Beatles. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's the closest I've ever got to, you know. So it was kind of nice. We had a photo and then they just sort of uh, went off again and that was my introduction to Comic Con I was like I like it here <laughs> and, um, and then we just done the panel obviously and um, it's just really well set up as well you know it's a lovely spirit in the air and yeah it's great really good so guys you're talking a bit about behind the scenes what it was like filming tell us some more about that particular moment you remember from shooting on set well I'll, I'll let the actors answer that more but for me <clears throat> the, the thing the incredible thing about our shoot <clears throat> was was every day had its own unique story in a way and, and I think in some ways the film's um uh, emblematic of that. It, it, in the, you know, Joe mentioned work, we worked in a town that was formerly a, a, a Palestinian refugee camp. Now it's, it's the, the beginnings of that town in the 70s. And that was an extraordinary process in itself. And then the, another day we we're hanging out of a Black Hawk helicopter. So, um, and a lot of it we didn't have any right to be doing really in, you know, in terms of the, the ambition of the filmmaking. And so every day had its own journey. I think that's very unusual. Sometimes you be in a film, you're in a studio, in the same studio for month upon end, and it's a, there's a certain kind of, um, I don't know, it rolls into one in a way, but with this, each day was very sort of individual. Um, so I don't, uh, individual memories for the boys, but there's so many to sort of talk, choose from. Really. Yeah, I mean, um, I think for me, the, 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 the process itself, I and mean, we, we, we've spoken a lot about um, how immersive it became, and, and, and how taxing and how grueling it could be out there in the desert, and, and, uh, and I suppose it was, for, for me, looking back on it now, like it's far more, it seems like far more of a daunting thing to, you know, if, if we were to, if someone was to tell me, oh, I've got to go and reshoot the whole thing, it'd be like, oh, I don't know. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it was, get back in bed, but, it, but it was, <laughs> but, but uh, as Tom was kind of uh, um, explaining there, there was just so many, let, let, forget just working experiences, um, in terms of life experiences, making this film was just something that was completely unforgettable um, for me. Um yeah, hanging out of helicopters and, and, and meeting Palestinian, you know, displaced Palestinian children and stuff. It, it's, it was just, it was, it was incredible. And you, and you were in, you felt far from home, but you were, you made this sort of little family for yourself, um, out there. And, and it was intense, but, 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 I mean, just, a, a, the character building. And just, I, I'm kind of finding it hard to put into words what, a, what an important experience it was for me. Yeah, that's uh, that I found out with this entire process of releasing the film, and you know, in the film festival, and being here with with you guys, and I get frustrated because I can't articulate how I feel about what we went through, and and uh, <clears throat> every day was was such a gift, you know what I mean? And and the actors who aren't with us, like Kyle and and Parker, who are also amazingly talented. I mean, everybody showed up on that set every day. And knew exactly what they had to do, and everybody did their part, and there was, there was no dead weight. Everyone was showed up ready, and it was just this really lovely, visceral experience. And I kind of, 
in many ways, I'm kind of sad it's over because the next productions that we go on to have, are going to have a really hard time of, you know, <laughs> trying to live up to this. It was weird. It was weird, sort of like coming back and it it did almost feel like having to readjust to like, yeah. especially the hustle and bustle of London in particular. You know, you kind of come back and those people around you, and it's sort of it, you, you feel like you've been you've been at war. <laughs> you know, walking past, going, you, you don't know what I've seen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> when people on Oxford Street outside Night Town or whatever. But um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it was it was it was weird. I think it's hard to put into words like Sam was explaining, but because it's it's paradoxical, you know, it is kind of, you're, what you're enjoying is the um, is the hardship in a way, you know, and it's not to sound like sort of, you know, actors who just want to suffer, it was because the story kind of, um, you know, it was always going to be physically tough, you know, it's a very serious subject matter that we're taking on, it's a heavily metaphorical film that has a narrative, but it's dealing with some, you know, some heavy subject matter, Um and so um, I don't think it was ever going to be the kind of film where we was going to sit around laughing. It's not, you know, I don't think that's what we're trying to say. You know, we're, you know, it was hard. But I think we're all the kind of actors, and I know Tom's the kind of director, where, where you want to make great work and you want to make, um, and you want to take your subject matters seriously. Um, and so you kind of know, even though it's physically aching or it's emotionally taxing or, or all the things that we went through, you know that you hopefully... Um, performing good work and that's all any actor really wants to do um, it's like if you work in an office you know my wife to, my wife works in an office she sort of said the hardest days are when you've got nothing to do when you're sitting around trying to kill time you know and it's the same for actors I loathe being on sets where you're sitting around waffling about who's got the biggest trailer you know it's like let's focus on the scenes focus on the subject and uh, and we've done it with this film you know yeah yeah I think it's interesting what Joe's saying you, you, how you know I, I've all the way through anything I've done in my short films, especially, I thought, how did I do that? I, I couldn't do that again. You know, if I had to, if I had to revisit that that process or re restart that process again, I don't think I could. And in a way, with this, it's a it's a confluence of things comes together, and and there's a very sort of dynamic energy to that, and that's what it was with this. And and again, it, you can you can have that intention and try and create that, but you've got to be fortunate enough to have people who, from from your cast and crew around you to support to support that and that that ideology. Um, and it, you know, we, and it, it's pretty bold what we went and tried to do. You know, yeah. we, you know, we, we, as I say, we, we cast the best actors for the roles. <coughs> but we took on something that I think in, in has not been done in the British film industry in this way before, which is making a science fiction um, spectacle movie of this scale for this type of budget, um, and you know, trying to sort of think more laterally and think with more scale and ambition for for, for this type of filmmaking. Uh, and that's quite frightening in a way, and it's quite bold to go to Detroit and to, to the Middle East with, with with a limited resource and and try and come back with something, you know, that that really um, that hopefully has an international sort of potential and that that, that speaks to a global audience in in some way. So um, quite bold, and and you know, a lot, a lot of a lot of people had to be brave, including the producers of the film and the financiers of the film, and and everyone involved in it. So yeah. Uh, was a was a, a special process. It will be hard to recreate. I think. You know, I'm very Definitely. lucky to have had the support of the people around me. That's for Sam. Absolutely. I love the things. Um, you, you tend to find as well when you're working in this way that reality and um, and what you're trying to tell on screen it all starts to blend together. I find and because you're not, we're not soldiers, you know, and we're not, and and so you take things from your own life and you use your imagination to try to get you to a place where you can convince an audience that you are, or or if it's. You know, like with Joe and I did This Is England, 86, you know, I'm not a sexual predator, you know, but I had to play one. So you take things from your own life. And I find that there's a there's a time in the process, if it's going right, where it all starts to bleed into one. You know, and I remember the night with the Bedouins, that was a big one for me, mm -hmm. you know, when we was, we was with a real Bedouin tribe. And um, and so um, something happened there that night. I, I just, I remember thinking special, this is this is kind of special and what I was thinking as the character started to become part of the reality and I was looking at these people I started off in a condescending way if I'm honest these people ha on the surface had nothing you know and I remember looking at them and just thinking how can I help in some and in my western sort of way of thinking you know what do I do give them a fiver or so you know I don't, it's ridiculous and um and then through the night and as it processed and they'd start singing and they'd, and you just realize these people had something that I never had or or that I long for and um, so there was a lot of stuff like that, you know, where it was very moving, very um, life-changing in some ways. 
but I don't know if enjoyable is the right word. You know, it's a funny thing, enjoyable, when you're hanging out of helicopters and screaming, <laughs> you know, and because uh, you think you're going to die. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's a funny word, enjoyable, but this film was very moving, I think, for all of us. I think we've all had an experience. That's why we're all, friendships have been made. And, you know. But you, li you listen, you, you know, you've got to listen to people around you as well and, 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 and very carefully listen to that. You know, we, we, we have tried to um, explore some very difficult and... Um, raw subject matter and something with a social relevance and in, in doing that you need to listen to the people who you're discussing that 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 filmmaking about and or that filmmaking is discussing rather and so we worked you know very closely with our work with um, undercover british officers in between tours of afghanistan you know as i say um we we cast a young man from detroit who served two tours of iraq and you know we brought him in as a as one to make up one of the unit and it was very much a part of a of, of creating the friction and, and the, the the visceral kind of hopefully authentic authentic nature of some of the scenes um, and you know and we worked with these amazing U US Marines on set the whole time who we helped block out the action sequences you know from getting the reloading of the guns right to the medical processes to you know they drove Humvees for us you know all, all those kind of things you know and we really tried to imbue the film with that authenticity and mm. try to listen to people and try to listen to the Jordanian people and the Bedouins and ev evoke that, that you know the, the way they live in, in, in the film as well so um, so that, that, and I think that that's why the film feels quite profound to us all, in, 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 in the way it was made, yeah. because you, you, you're dealing with people who have really experienced these things, and they're quite extreme things in life to, to have experienced, or quite an extreme way to live as, as a Bedouin tribesman. It's an extreme place to have been as a <coughs> as a U.S. Marine, you know. So you, who's done that for ten years? So you you, you want to kind of honour that, and 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 um, and you when you're working with people who are that generous about giving you their intimate life stories and their testimonies you, you really want to honor that right and, and that's why these actors have all gone there and, and have been so detailed and stayed in character stayed method and to, to really try and make that accurate and I, ho I hope i hope that comes across in the film i believe it does but it's for audiences to decide ultimately yeah. i mean i think um and tom we've we've talked before about the fact i think one of the ways this film preserves the legacy of the first film is in juxtaposing sort of big sci-fi action with a very intimate character-driven story. Um, I think it'd be interesting if just each of the boys could tell us just a little bit about their character and the, the sort of what they bring to that dynamic, that tapestry. Um, well, I play I play Frankie Maguire, who's uh, a young private who is essentially uh, um, Parks, who is, who is Sam's character, and uh, who's very much whose eyes we you know we're we're experiencing this this story through. Um, and I, I, I guess I'm, I'm his oldest and, and, and best friend and, an act as a kind of, a, I don't know really, just, just, uh, the, and the closest thing to family that, that, that Parks has had. Um, uh, but with that, he's, you know, he can lead people astray, uh, just as much. He's quite cocksure. Um, <clears throat> is very keen on the idea of going, uh, of signing up to the army and, and going to war and then, the, the the realities of the situation actually hit, probably hit him the hardest uh, once they get out there. So for me as an actor, it was a, it was a great uh, challenge and a, a, <clears throat> a great joy to be able to play those kind of two sides of of the same coin. Really, I think that's always what you're looking for. You know, when you, you want you want your your characters to be to be complex and three dimensional and, and and layered, and so they have to experience a change in in some way, shape, or form. And I think maybe you know. Uh, all, all, all the characters experience quite significant change during the movie, and, and, and I, I found Frankie's particularly interesting. I, I, um, I play a character called Noah Freighter. He's a platoon sergeant. He's um, 17 years, served his country. Uh, it's his eighth tour. Um, and uh, so this guy's, you, you could argue, he's coming to the end of his military career, or he certainly sees that in the distance. And. Um, what was fascinating for me about him and, and this film in particular was that there's kind of two versions I can give you. I can give you the narrative version of this is who this man is and he gets a, a group of young recruits, turns up and um, and uh, they go on a journey together, almost a road movie together and um, and uh, find stuff out uh, about each other and about themselves within that journey. And um, so that's kind of the narrative. But what's what's beautiful about the film for me and what's important about the film what, what it was that attracted me when I first read the script was that um, it's the subtext there's stuff going on underneath it's metaphorical as well and what the monsters then mean and what they're a representation of both in the bigger context but also to the character individually and um, 
and it's not new it's nothing new nothing's original you know you can only make something authentic i, I think you know but it, it's been done before i've, I've quoted <clears throat> Whether it's you know Oscar Wilde's story in Grey, or whether it's George Orwell using Animal Farm, you, you know there's, we, you, you know it's what great storytelling's about when when something narratively is um, dragging you along and 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 taking you somewhere, but there's something deeper going on. And uh, for, for me with Noah, um, I love the fact that uh, what was going on within this guy is also going on without with these monsters, and you kind of see that and how the two connect together and. Uh, um, I, I, I love that. I love, um, I love that method of storytelling. Fantasy. I love. Um, it's interesting. We're at a sci-fi. You know, um, fairy tales were made up for that reason. You know, for exploring the human psyche through metaphor. Through, you know, and so for me, um, um, it's kind of hard to describe. Sometimes I can do the narrative thing and give you the psychological breakdown of who the character is, but the fact is, really, there's there's a lot going on. There's um, kind of parallel stories going on at once. If that makes any sense to you. You're a better man than me, but um. <laughs> um, I play Michael Parks, who, as Joe said, is kind of the audience, kind of eyes and ears throughout this kind of experience, if you like. Um, Mikey's a young kid from Detroit, and as as Joe was saying, Frankie is his world. He's his kind of only real, who he deems to be family, and holds him very near and dear to him. And as you watch the film you kind of you get the gravitas of how close they actually are and how much they actually mean to each other um i had to make very kind of very distinct choices in when i was honored when tom kind of cast me in the film and and asked me to be part of it because when i first read the script i was just completely blown away by it and i wanted in i, I didn't care how I, I didn't mind what part and I, I just wanted to work with tom again from, from the last time and uh so there was that. There was those couple of changes. There was the the change to be an American kid, but also to be a kid from such an improv, impoverished area, and to be in the military as well. <clears throat> so there was physical change. There was an accent change. There was, you know, you had to you had to I basically wanted people to to look up and go, okay, well, this guy's a real person. It's not a it's not an actor, you know. And I think everybody kind of made those choices, and, and that's why we went so deep in this film. But. Um, it was very important to get that right, and because because Mike leaves, he leaves Detroit and goes on this, you know, mad kind of war with the with his uh, with his closest friends, and he really gets to find out what type of man he actually is. He's put into situations whereby the person who he thought he was really kind of dissolves down, if you like, and and he, he's forced to make decisions in situations whereby he, he truly does find out what type of man he is and what he wants out of life and uh, as the film goes on you see, you get to see if he made the right choice in joining the army and you know and uh, what he makes of himself as a man and, and what he makes of his, his you know his teammates and what he makes of you know Sergeant Freder in particular um, so yeah it was very difficult very demanded but I mean it was the most rewarding filming experience I've ever had in my life and I, I wouldn't change an absolute day of it and I just hope that it kind of when when audiences come in and finally sit down and watch this that they'll get a small taste of of what we were trying to do you know if they go through a fraction of what we went through out there we've done our jobs 